viewers, it's my joy to welcome you to our episode today. This is from Wave of Worship, and we thank God for another week, and we thank God that we know that you're keeping safe, and God is blessing you and your family. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be bringing uh, David G., uh, all the way from uh, Nigeria and Abuja, and he's going to be bringing us a song titled uh, Faithful God. So please, with Jesus' joy, let's just sit and watch and participate as David G. takes us to the throne of God. Yes, you are good, mighty God. Glorious God, you are. viewers i think you were blessed by the ministration of uh, david g that was a wonderful and great song uh, titled faithful god you know that song always blesses me and i know it has blessed you too uh tonight also we're glad to have uh, on this program one of our mothers one of the board members of wave of worship uh she is pastor lorna lazoski and she happened to be uh, one of the uh, board members of the Wave of Worship, and also she hosted Wave of Worship in her region in year 2006 in Palm Springs. So with Jesus' joy this evening, she has some things to share with us, and let us welcome Pastor Lorna Lazowski. 
Hi, I'm Lorna Lazowski from La Quinta, California, and I'm going to give my testimony of what happened to youth at Wave of Worship in 2006. In 2006, 21 different churches came together to help me in Wave of Worship. Dr. Bova had come to me and asked if I would do I pick up the baton from Banning, California, and I said I would. I went to one of the largest churches, and they presented me with a baton for Palm Springs, California, for Wave of Worship. At that time, Dr. Bola said, we're going to have to ask God and have him prepare a place for us to have this meeting. So Dr. Bola came to me right away and said, we will rent the Angels Stadium where the Angels baseball games were held. We went to the Angels Stadium and they wanted $1,600 for the stadium, another $1,800 for the stage. For the man and the sound equipment was another $4,000. We paid for the electric, the nurse, the water, the water men, two guards, and when we were finished, we had spent $10,000. I said to Dr. Bola, who will ever pay for this? And he replied, with great faith, God will. So I gave him the money, and sure enough, every dime of that money came back, that $10,000. This all happened on the opening day was July, was June the 26th, 2006, six months, 26th day, and six year. We held a meeting in the stadium. It was 120 degrees in the shade. Dr. Bola and I joined hands and prayed for the clouds to cover the stadium. God came and he covered the sun and we had a cool, beautiful day. Then the stadium office people turned on the misters to cool off the seats and the air around us on the seats. The wave of worship, what it really means to me, number one, it started out with miracles and, number, and that was the $10,000 that it came back to us. We didn't have to pay anything for that whole um, operation. Then the other thing was the cloud covering. What do I know about the wave of worship? I became a battle axe for Jesus. I realized that praise and worship had brought down the armor of God to me. I realized that I was li a living trumpet. When I worshiped God, he himself came down and put the armor on me. He taught me that he would be there to cover me at all times. I want to pray for the United States of America, and I want to pray for the world. But while I'm, what I want to give to you right now is a scripture. Your hand, O Lord, will find your enemies, all who hate you. When you appear, they will be destroyed in the fierce fire of your presence. The Lord will destroy them and their children. For these men plot against you, Lord, but, not, but they cannot possibly succeed. They will turn and flee when they see your arrows aimed straight at them. Accept our praise, O Lord, for all your glorious power. We will write songs to celebrate your mighty acts. Lord, we pray for the world. Right now, this coronavirus has spread all over the world. We're asking you, God, to cover us with your mighty fire. When these things come toward us, that they would be spontaneously combusted. We thank you, Lord, right now for the United States of America. 
Watch over your people and guard and direct them. Watch over the president and watch over all people that are in uniform. We praise and give you praise, Lord, for the world, all the different countries that are having situations in trouble. We cover them with the wave of worship, Lord, their armor, Ephesians 6, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bringing the message today is by a very humble self, and I'm going to be teaching on the essence of life. God bless you as you listen to this message, and I know it's really, really going to bless you a great deal. Thank you. Uh, the topic before us today that we shall be discussing is the essence of life. Or what is the essence of life? The essence of life is God. Every life came from God, and every life comes from God. Every life is an integral part of God. God gave us his own very life to carry out his plan and purposes on earth. Therefore, we can say that every life is from God. Every life is valuable. Every life counts. Every life matters. Every life has a purpose. Every life has a mandate. Every life is an asset, as an asset to nations of the world. Every life is very important. Every life is a gift from God. The life that carries redemptive grace are always a target of the enemy. People that carry redemptive grace from God are always a target of the enemy. And that brings us to a quick discussion on the life of people like Moses. When the children of Israel were being uh, treated badly in Egypt as slaves, they cried out to God and God sent Moses. When Moses was born, I think the enemy knew that a deliverer has been born that would deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. Upon this information that was gotten in the realm of the spirit, so Pharaoh decided that any child that was from the age of two downwards must be killed. And so that operation was carried out. And that made the parents of Moses to take the baby and put him in a basket and then went and dumped him in the river for safety. And his sister was watching. And we read of the account of uh, how Pharaoh's daughter was there around there and saw the little baby and then took that baby into herself. And uh, God used Moses' mother to raise that same child that she gave birth to. And she was paid also for doing that. And so if we always found out that anytime there's a redemptive plan that God wants to carry out, he sends, you know, a deliverer, he sends a human agent, he sends a life, and that life will be become the, the target of the enemy. So Moses became the target of the enemy, and his life was sought after to be killed. Only God knew how many children, children's life went because of went down because of that. And the same thing is going on in our world today. A lot of killings are going on and I begin to sense in my spirit that God has an agenda. The cry of the innocent, the cry of the weak, the cry of those who cannot help themselves are reaching up to the Lord. And so heaven is responding and the kingdom of darkness is carrying out all this massive killing around the world just to make sure that God's redemptive plan for humanity is uh, aborted. What would have happened if Pharaoh succeeded in killing Moses? He tried, of course. He tried by killing many children just to take out Moses. But God, in his infinite wisdom, spared the life of Moses. 
the enemy knew that his kingdom was going to suffer from the oh, from for the uh, from the freedom of the children of Israel that had been used as slaves for four hundred years. So he did everything possible to stop that from happening. But God was wiser. Moses grew up in Pharaoh's palace, and eventually God used him to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. Hallelujah. His plan of releasing the children of Israel was to give them their own identity, to make them a nation on earth that everybody can be proud of. And because God was involved, or was the architect of, this, uh, of the establishment of that nation upon the uh, covenant that he had with Abraham, that through him, the entire families of the earth shall be blessed. So even though they are one of the smallest nations of the earth, and yet they have become very, very relevant to different levels, uh, different kinds of development and breakthroughs in the area of, in the field of science, religion, and so many areas we can medic medicine, and many areas of uh, of breakthroughs in the world today. So, if that nation was not allowed to 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 take off, and the progenitors of those nations were, have been killed, because we felt that you know, we have to control you know the growth of hum the hum of humanity, then what would have happened today? Israel will have not been a nation that would be known on earth for any reason. Well, the second question in my mind at this, this moment is the is about the birth of Jesus Christ. Suppose Herod was able, King Herod was able to kill Jesus. Of course he tried. He wanted to do that. Suppose he succeeded in killing Jesus as an infant. What would have happened to God's redemptive plan to save humanity of their sins? So, but God again was smarter. He sent Jesus Christ to Africa, to Egypt, the same Egypt where uh, the children of Israel were delivered from centuries earlier. It was the same place that became an abode, a hiding place for the son of the living God, where he was for about 13 years before he returned. After Herod died, then he returned back to, to Israel. You can see that the enemy is always attacking the life or the lives of those that carry redemptive grace upon them. Those who God has sent to do something very, very important in the world. And when that time is about to take, uh, when something like that is about to happen, they are going to see massive destruction of life from the enemy's camp all over the world. So the same thing in the time of uh, 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 was Nebuchadnezzar, he also was like, he set up an idol and instructed that anybody that does not worship that idol must be killed. So the agenda of man when it comes to the lives of humanity is it would never work. Even though the enemy might try, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at any time. It doesn't work. So what we are witnessing in our world today is another massive massacre and murder of innocent citizens that carry the life of God in them. And the enemy is doing everything possible to terminate the lives of those who have redemptive grace to be able to bring some new things into our world sent by God. So the devil is really targeting certain young people. And you find out that this particular virus and pandemic situation is dealing with young people, older people. And of course, right now we've realized that uh, it's even affecting the youths as well. So now, something I want to discuss today about, this, what is this life itself? What is this life? What does it carry? Every life carries, you know, a fraction of God. Every life that is on this earth carries a fraction of God. And what every life needs to be able to function very well is light. So Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning, as, uh, uh, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was void and, was, uh, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
and God said, let there be, uh, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God says, let there be light, and there was light. So light is one of the th major ingredients of one of the major powerful force that life needs to be able to function. Every life needs light because light is the, 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 es the essence of light is life. So when Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, it says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. In him, uh, without in all things were made by him and without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life and the life is the light of men. So life and light, you can't separate. Anyone who has the life of God in him has light in him. And Jesus Christ is that light. He says, I am the light of the world. That's what Christ said. Then he turned and looked at his disciples and said, you also are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Every light, every life carries an amount of light. And this light is supposed to actually overpower the darkness, the confusion, the, uh, the, 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 the wickedness, you know, the, 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 the plan of the enemy in every society, in every community. So you and I, I will have life in us, and that life has an amount of light that is supposed to help to solve problems that are confronting the world. I believe that everyone that is a, 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 a carrier of the life of God is an agent that God has sent to this world to contribute towards the well-being of humanity and also to please God on a day-to-day basis. So our life is an investment from God. And God has put in everyone, you know, an ability to contribute in the nature of God with the nature of God to contribute towards the well-being of the entire world. So Christ is the light, is the life that God sent to save humanity from their sins and then to pay the price for our, our sins by dying on the cross and then to defeat the devil and then to overpower the sting of death and of hell and set humanity free forever so that he can reconcile us back to God. That was the mission that God sent Jesus Christ to go carry out here on earth. And so when he came in here, the Bible said that wise men saw his stars in the, in the east. So that was a light. And that's why today in America and other nations, when it is the time to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ every year, it is celebrated on the 25th of December. And prior to that day, a lot of places are lit up you know, because Christ is, Christ is the light of the world. Every life is supposed to radiate the light of God. We're supposed to radiate the light of God. Light means illumination, understanding, revelation. So with the pandemic situation we find ourselves today, we are all agents of God. We are all carriers of the life of God. We are all carriers of the light of God. We are supposed to shed light to the darkness that is going on in the world today. We are not supposed to actually, uh, we are supposed to be revealers or the, the exposers of the works of darkness. So when we are in Christ Jesus, the life of God is flowing in us and then the light of God is actually radiating from us. So today, I just want you to know that you are, you, you are a carrier of the life of God in you. And as a result of that, you have a certain amount of light that is beaming out of you to bring joy to the world, to bring peace to the community, to bring advancement to humanity, and then to affect your community, your family, and then your nation. So the Bible said, let your light so shine before men. That was so shine, talks about the intensity of the light that should shine through. Say, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven, to our Father in heaven. So God is calling us to shine the light of our lives to such an extent that everyone will see our good works. So work is also tied to light. So when your light is shining, it means there's some good work that you are doing. Let not your good work become evil work. 
a lot of people they are doing they are carrying out evil work and then they are actually pumping more darkness into their community but you are the light of god because you are the carrier of the life of god so i encourage you today to let your good work be seen to affect people you know in every area of human endeavor as a doctor as a nurse as a pastor as a preacher as a husband as a wife as a child as a grandparent as an engineer as a president as a governor as a senator as a house of assembly member as a scientist at whatever vocation you are called into please remember you are sent here by god to be an agent of his to shine the light of god upon the darkness of the world so let your light so shine that men may see your good works and give glory to your father in heaven may god bless you amen well i hope this program has blessed you today and uh, we've come almost to the end of it uh, except that we have one more song that's gonna go and that song is a very very important song that i wrote kind of like to pin down the essence of life uh, that song was composed to teach us about the the life as it connects to where, how God made us for worship. And so enjoy that song as it comes. As we also prepare next episode, we shall be hosting a very great man of God that I respect so much. His name is Apostle Dick O'Kreider. And he is going to be sharing about uh, that discovery on how to handle the problem of starvation in Africa and other parts of the world. They've discovered some new trends that people can actually use to deal with this issue of uh, starvation. May God bless you and have a wonderful weekend till we come your way again. This is Dr. Bola Rolo. Say thank you all for watching. God bless you. In the beginning, God gave seven keys to men to rule the world and everything in it, everything on earth, everything in the valley, everything on the mountain, everything in the ocean. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, through verse 28, oh, you will find it there. God gave Adam seven keys to rule the world oh, and to reign on earth. The keys of music to open and shut. The seven keys are the keys of David. The reason why God made the man.